nestled right outside of the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Gatlinburg, Tennessee is the home to tons of tourist destinations that families all come to, flock to every year, probably hundreds upon thousands of people. There is a sinister history that many do not know about, and we're here to tell you about it. We're here at White Oak Flat Cemetery, established in 1830. Some of the founding members of Gatlinburg were buried in the cemetery. There's also some legends about some of the people who were buried here. Um, this is where we will be starting our expedition. It's said that there's many ghost spirits that haunt this cemetery, uh, including one named Lydia, which we will talk about later over at the Greenbrier restaurant. Now the Edgewater Hotel you see behind me in one of those upper windows is where they say a seven-year-old girl fell to her death. So let's talk about the Edgewater Hotel. So we went there earlier. Do you know the story? It's only a little girl, right? Yeah. So a seven-year-old little girl, they say, was at the Edgewater and she fell out of her window, or no, that had to be the balcony. Um, essentially what happened was she fell into the creek below. The police found out, they started accusing the parents who then they say fled and were speeding down the winding mountain road in the national park and ended up flipping their car over and uh, they died themselves. That was in 1972. Now, a lot of people, um, have a hard time finding any articles about this um, incident, but um, I've been on several ghost tours over the last 15 years and um, I've heard this story several times, so I don't know. But they say you hear the little girl on the anniversary of her death every year. She's crying down in the um, creek below. So the tragedies of the Space Needle, there's actually two. And when I first heard this story, there was only one at the time. And that was uh, when they were constructing it back in 1995. You know what happened? Is that the elevator one? Or the... Yeah, that's the elevator one. So the man, or one of the guys who was working on it, he was a younger guy. Um, he ended up getting crushed in the elevator shaft. Um, it's weird because you can't find a lot of information about this case, but Googling, I found um, actual like court documents um, where they were suing, I believe, the elevator company um, for like a faulty elevator. So. Anyways, flash forward to 2016 and you can Google this and find out. Um, a man actually ended up going up to the top and he ended up uh, committing suicide and uh, jumping off. So um, I don't know what it is about the Space Needle, but um, yeah, I wouldn't, I, I don't know why you wanted it to go on it. It just seems like it's not a good idea. So uh, yeah.
So probably one of the uh, most well-known cases that we're talking about was the one at the Rocky Top Village Inn. Um, in 1986, September, um, there was a young 21-year-old woman, I believe she was 21, named Missy, and a security guard named, was it Troy? Yeah. So Missy was 21 and Troy was 36. Um, they were working at the Rocky Top Village Inn. There was a couple of people involved in the crime. The criminals, um, one of them was being Tattoo Eddie. He was the main orchestrator of this. Um, they basically pretended like they were going to check in to a room. They had Missy the clerk show them where the room is. Uh, Missy was stabbed many times and then she was eventually shot in the head. So once uh, Missy's husband was trying to call her and she didn't answer, he ended up calling um, Troy, the um, security guard, to ask him you know, to check on her to see what was going on. At that point, um, one of the criminals, Kimberly, she ended up hitting uh, Troy in the head with a flashlight, um, stabbing him, and then he got shot in the head between the eyes. Um, they all did end up getting apprehended. Um, I know the one guy, Tattoo Eddie, um, he was killed in prison in 2015, but uh, they were all captured. screams of the people who were killed that tragic evening. The hotel has actually um, since been torn down. They actually built another hotel, which we have a picture of. Um, we're actually staying like right up the road from it. Um, so far, nobody's really said they've had any kind of uh, paranormal activity happening in the new hotel. But um, there was somebody who claimed they took a picture of the new hotel and there was some kind of apparition. So you know is their spirit still lingering around i don't know you know anytime anybody dies from some kind of violent death there's always that chance that um you know the residual energy and just the sadness rage everything that accompanies a gruesome murder like that is kind of lingering around so yeah pretty pretty messed up stuff <laughs> The story of Lydia um, is really sad, actually. So I love the Green Briar. Um, we actually ate there tonight because um, we're in Gatlinburg uh, just for the evening. And um, so and Scotch creme brulee. Yeah, but they, they have really good. <laughs> but um, yeah, they just recently remodeled the place. But um, the Green Briar used to be a you know not a bed and breakfast, but an inn of some sorts back in I think it was the 1920s. Um, it started and so there was a woman named Lydia and she was supposed to get married in town so the day of her wedding they say she went to the church oh, sorry indigestion <laughs> the would-be groom never showed up wait hold on so the say it again the would-be groom never showed up he never showed up very distraught very upset Lydia went back to the inn and she ended up hanging herself off of... So what, what would you have done if I didn't show up? I'd have moved on with my life. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't have did what she did? No. So she hung herself off of the back of the uh, restaurant, which is crazy because every time I sit by the windows there, I'm thinking of that. But um, yeah, they ended up finding out her groom was uh, mauled by a mountain lion in the national park. Um, so he passed away too. He didn't, he didn't stand her up though. Um, but she apparently still haunts the place. Um, they say she's supposed to be very friendly. She's kind of mischievous at times. Um, they've done different investigations there. They said that she's possibly buried actually behind the restaurant. Um, they say sometimes you can hear her crying. Um, I know- a drink named after her too, you can order. Yes, yes. But um, she's often standing on the steps going up to the um, banquet area and um, yeah, she's flung silverware off of tables. She's just mischievous, but she's kind and she's nice. And I know um, a lot of people have investigated the restaurant. 
They've investigated the restaurant over the last however many years it's been a restaurant as soon as they realized that it was haunted. Um, so, you know, it'd be nice if they could help her move on, but I guess that's their claim to fame. But uh, good creme brulee. They say microphone. that we are here. But loud. What? Loud. We are here. White. What should I say? You just record. I'll cut it out. Mister, background to the place. Oh no. Here, you say. It's recording. Welcome to Gatlinburg, Tennessee. <laughs> Welcome to Gatlinburg, Tennessee, nestled just outside of the Scrape <laughs> National Park. This is a yeah, popular tourist destination for families to come, relax, and unwind. But there is a sinister history. Let me do that again. But there is a sinister history that many do not know about, and we're here to tell you about it. Okay. I can cut. I can like that. Like that. <laughs> So probably one, I shouldn't be laughing, this is so funny. Okay. Oh, sorry, indigestion. A lot of people have investigated the, uh, the, bleh, bleh, bleh. 